bit of a different episode this time. A story we haven't shared in our vlogs yet. We did in a blog post, but let's be honest, writing is a lot easier than sharing a story on camera. And especially since English is not our native language. So, but the story that we're going to share in this episode is the story of an entrepreneur that went bankrupt and what that did to him and his family. What it did to us. It is almost five years ago that Gerben's company went bankrupt and it felt time to share this story and to close a chapter for ourselves and start a new one. The end of the chapter, the frauds that are on the run, as some have called us over the years. So join us in some pleasant sailing with a little bit colder weather and a personal, very personal story. What do we need, Benjamin? Slang. The hose. 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 What are we going to do? Clothes maken. Cleaning the boat, right? Nee, clothes maken. No, can you say it in English? English. Cleaning the boat. Clean boat. Wonderful. So good to be back on the boat. So we're gonna wash the boat today. We're gonna take off the spray hood I already took off yesterday and the bimini because during we had a strong winds when we were not here and one of the zippers of the spray hood got loose so we have to sew it again and Benjamin and we are gonna clean the boat oh. yes it's a little bit too big for you right oh um, no no it's perfect yeah yes so we're gonna clean the boat and then we're going for a sunset sail and we have a live session with our patrons tonight we're gonna share some very exciting news some life-changing news so and before that we need a clean shiny perfect sense So the boat is nice and shiny, the sun is almost setting and we are ready to go because we're gonna do the first sunset session with our patrons, right Diana? Yes! To and share some? Some big news! <laughs> big news? And we're looking forward to sail! <laughs> and the engine is running, so after two months it started. So everything is fine. And looking forward. Benjamin was a little bit upset that we left his ball and bicycle on the gate. So uh, yeah, then we take it with us. <laughs> Choose your battles. Yeah, you feel. You feel, yeah. You oh, go. No. Do you want to be behind the helm, or do you want to untie the boat? Untie the boat. Really? Yes. Okay. And we're gonna be cabriolet sailing. Uh, how do you how do you call it cabriolet without uh, no rooftop. no rooftop? It's gonna be the first time with everything down. So you prefer the perfect scent, right? Yes, definitely.
schon. Jetzt schon kommt er her. Yeah. It's so good to be uh, behind the anchor again. The anchor alarm went off uh, three times uh, because we put it uh, pretty tight and the wind completely shifted to the other side. So, uh, so we have to adjust to it. But uh, yeah, it's very good to be. Uh, it's it's kind of a feeling of freedom, and yeah, that's that's what we like. And instead of being in the marina, because then we are between all the, the big super yachts and yeah, that feels like packed for us. And, uh, yeah, so it's good. So today we're gonna be a little bit of sailing, uh, exploring the bay, testing everything. I think we should go to the other side. Yes, we are ready. Everything checked. The boat is ready. And we're gonna explore Montenegro. No. The coastline of Montenegro. I think the wind is around 4.5 knots. So it's gonna be easy yes, sail. Yeah. So good to get into the rhythm, right? Yes, definitely. Yes, Benjamin? It's been a while raising the anchor. We didn't get far yesterday. There's the marina. <laughs> we dropped anchor over here. But uh, yeah, time to explore Montenegro today. So let's see. Wow! <laughs> Okay, thanks. Okay. There's a boat. Speed boat.
bubbles. Yeah. Where do you see big bubbles? Yeah. Inside? Yeah. Okay. Okay, on our last trip, we lost one of our pedals. So I have to make a new one. And we are waiting for our outboard engine. We made the decision to go for a 20 horsepower uh, Suzuki. Uh, because of the rate ratio, the horsepower rate ratio. But yeah, they are facing some uh, delivery problems due to, uh, let's say, COVID. And yes, and you want to roll, Benjamin? Okay. Today we were really fighting with each other. He was really punching me and so uh, Jan is having a hard, hard time with all the masculine energy here on board the Perfect Sense. go we, we can't put the boat over there we can't tie it yes almost there so come on <laughs> yes <laughs> so um frauds and on the run this is actually something we've been called a couple of times during the last five years and five years ago, a little bit less than five years ago, Tinker, German's company, went bankrupt. It yep. was one of the most challenging times uh, we have been through. And we would love to share that story with you to get you to know us a little bit more, of course. Uh, but maybe there are also people who are in a similar situation or, um, or yeah, family or friends uh, that maybe, yeah, that we can be of support in some kind of way or so we decided to share this story. So not for you keyboard warriors who are calling us frauds and on the run. Uh, but this is really, really about telling a story that this could actually happen to anyone. It's really tough. Yeah, I was involved in a big uh, travel startup. We started in 2012 together with my best mate, Rob. It's a technology company. Yeah, we were aiming to become the first virtual airline in the world. Yeah, we had we had an amazing journey. So for five years, it, we, we grew from, let's say, sitting together with two guys uh, with, with a box of uh, beer bottles to 80 people in a beautiful office in Amsterdam. Uh, serving more than um, or almost one million uh, passengers. And it's cold here. Yes, cold it's here. very cold here. Come. Mom, come. Do you want to say hi? No. 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 Later, Ben. We're we're talking to all our viewers. So we're gonna tell you that story. And uh, yeah, this is not about um, how that we've been hurt the most or who to blame. No, this story is just about the story of an entrepreneur and his family behind a bankruptcy. Yeah. And to be honest, with a bankruptcy, everybody loses. There are a lot Absolutely. of people who lost a lot of money, customers, employees, uh, investors, investors, bank, bank we you we, as founders, we, we as founders. Lot. yeah just to, to let you know a little bit more behind the scenes and the sto a little bit more in what, depth what's about, going on yeah about because we so now now we talk about a lawsuit that's still going on uh, we had the story about how the boat came into our lives and now you will have the full picture and we hope that if there are people in a similar situation we can maybe be of some kind of support or um, yeah, support and help. That's yeah, uh, and for me now it's the the right moment to to share it, that I'm able to share it. Yeah, yeah, you've been through a very hard period in your life. Yeah, and I couldn't talk about it, but now the strength is getting back. So uh, yeah, it's time to share it. A perfect sense is talking with us. <laughs> <laughs>
No, so, but this, this is the place to be. Yeah, so during our first official sale of 2022, we're gonna talk to you about being fraud and on the run. <laughs> But first, I wanted to share the whole story with you because the period before the bankruptcy, because we were creating, for, for, for at least for me, the most beautiful company in the world. And together with my, my, my best friend, Rob, we were trying to establish the first virtual airline in the world. And it was really a technology company. And we started just from scratch, just with, with his idea. He was the visionaire. He was had this whole concept in his mind. And yeah, we, we, we hooked up together and then we grew. We, we, we started as... Maybe it felt something like this, the bankruptcy. <laughs> okay, sorry. And then we, in five years time, we, we expanded to a team of almost 80 people. We had a beautiful office in the city center of Amsterdam. We had offices around um, airports in Europe and we served almost 1 million customers uh, since the start. So everything was uh, was great. And then after five years, I we, we gave everything. And on a personal level, I was, I was tired. You were actually at that point, okay, you had this feeling, okay, the company is almost there. You gave yeah. some responsibilities to your partner as well. And you went to buy the boats to finally find more peace. Because actually, you were already feeling that you were in this balance. It was yeah. time for you to sail. Yeah, so what I did is I sold my house, then I bought the perfect sense because I always had that in mind to, to start sailing and I talked with my business partner about it. So I would step back a little bit um, and start sailing. Actually, and if you're, if you're not into tech startups, and I wasn't into tech startups, it was really hard for me to understand, but I did a lot of research. With tech startups, you need a lot of capital to keep evolving yeah. because the tech needs so much attention. For example, Uber, I don't know if they are making actually money right now, but still for not. the first years they were making loss, year upon year upon yeah, year and I, and upon I, year. And, and I want to say something. <laughs> we, 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 we beat it uber in amsterdam <laughs> and yes we beat it uber in amsterdam and they they took our uh, tagline <laughs> no they took our tagline so we we got in a relationship when i just sold one of my other companies i just bought a perfect sense i was on the top of the game it was really yeah, you were really that that very driven successful entrepreneur that, that was for me it wasn't success or something like that but no. what i really loved uh your possibility to make the impossible possible yeah. you always had a drive i don't care what people think or what people say if i set my mind to it i will achieve it yeah. and that, that way, was very attractive for you. yeah but I, I really admired that tremendously for me the company was everything it was like my sometimes people talk about their entrepreneurs talk about their baby yes for me it was it was my baby i put everything in Everything and Everything. More. Uh, I put a loan on the boat. My business partner, he took a loan on the house of his mother to get everything together float because we, we never imagined that, that we would go down. No, and that you, it, you even signed personal uh, for yeah, uh, extra loans uh, in the end. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. There was no, no thought that it would go wrong. No. And then it did. And, and then, then it happened. And yes. Yeah. Besides the fact I lost everything uh, money-wise, I the most important I lost was was what my mindset. Before that, everything was 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 possible and I could achieve. And even with the cancer, when when I had to face my cancer, I do, it was I was in a positive mindset and I would beat the cancer. But on this level, I didn't see anything how to beat it. With the bankruptcy, just you just lost everything and you didn't know. You just knew it was lost. And yeah. you knew you couldn't do anything anymore to get that back. No. It was done. Yeah. It, w it, it actually. I, I, I didn't it, see any, any light anymore. No, and I think because of course there are so many other possibilities to create something new and to do something exciting as we are doing now, but at that moment it was all about your company. Yeah. And that was. That gone. was my life. That yeah. was my life. I, I I slept on the couch in the company because I had <laughs> didn't had a place. I, I didn't have a home anymore. Um, yeah, yeah. So it, it it was everything for me. What does a bankruptcy do an, to an entrepreneur? And I think, in essence, 
for everybody this is different but i think there are some things that that every every entrepreneur will feel it is failure it is loss of control it is shame maybe even heavy yeah. yeah. you were seen as that most successful guy yeah. and suddenly people thought oh there must be something wrong there yeah. and and this is also it, at least in the Netherlands, they have, uh, people have a lot of judgment. So when there is a bankruptcy, it's quite soon that people say, "Oh, then there must have there, been there something, must be wrong. something There must be yeah. something wrong." And we were quite. We had a high profile in the media. All the newspapers uh, took the news, and um, and even national television. Yeah. So yeah, then. Uh, and then you had all the people who lost their money. For for me as an entrepreneur, uh, I set up all all, um, all kind of companies, and I did it always with my own money. Uh, but this company, it was a tech startup, so it needed a lot of money. So investors were involved, um, banks were involved. But uh, yeah, when we went down, everyone lo uh, lost money. So from customers, from partners, uh, from banks, investors. Yeah, and I, f I, I, f I felt really responsible for it, of course. And this is, uh, this is what really took, took me down. And yeah, n not everyone was happy, of course. <laughs> not everyone was happy. So I called most of the partners, of the employees, of the, um, of the investors, and then um, yeah, some conversations were uh, very negative and people got hurt of course and yeah that that beat it out all the energy i had in my uh, in my body left preparing for um, sailing again I want to share with you guys as well how it was for me as a partner of and the family to experience the whole bankruptcy and of course we were just together very shortly so that gave a totally different dynamic probably than when you are together for a long time uh, but I still think in essence it's um, a lot is the same and it doesn't matter how long you've been together or not and um, I think one of the most difficult things was seeing uh, Gerben um, yeah, having it so tough and struggling a lot and, um, and then came along all the judgment from others we even had death threats so now and then I felt uns yeah, unsafe and insecure um, we had a lot of people who were right instantly saying, oh, there must be something wrong, uh, you must be frauds, uh, you must, must have done things that are illegal. Um, we had friends walk away, we had one family member being very judgmental and uh, yeah, it was just hard and I think one of the most difficult things I found is that suddenly I was also the one that did the things wrong. I was also the fraud and we had one comment on YouTube in the first months that we were um, showing our videos. I think even with the fourth video already or something like that. And somebody said you both belong in jail, uh, you're frauds and yeah and <laughs> yeah actually those things really hurt. It's, it's not fun especially because I had nothing to do with the company. I just met Gerben and, and we ju were just in a relationship when it went bad with the company. And then to be called a fraud as well. Uh, yeah, I, I think that was really hard to take on that responsibility or to put that responsibility on me. And of course, uh, we determine ourselves how we feel and how things affect us. Uh, but in the beginning, I was really struggling with that, especially because I've been a lawyer for four or five years uh, and I am that person that always sticks to the rules very strictly. Sometimes it's so annoying for Gerben, but I, I don't cross the speed limits. I never got a ticket, only one time a parking ticket when I forgot to put on my parking uh, app. 
uh, I always always want to do the right thing and 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 I'm yeah so for me being called a fraud with always being so tight with rules and things was yeah was actually quite hard and completely unfair of course yeah also yeah and I, I, I get where it comes from and so that makes it a little bit easier um, I know how the brain of people work we make a judgment unconsciously about everyone we come across into our lives within 15 seconds and if you hear bankruptcy and see people living on a sailboat and that's your first impression I get that you think oh there they must have done something wrong there must be something illegal going on there and what we do unconsciously afterwards making that judgment is that we constantly our brain is constantly seeking for clues and evidence and facts and it's even interpreting facts in a way that confirms the, yeah, the confirms, belief confirms, that it confirms the belief confirms the belief that you have so i get that but for me it was so frustrating because i was really like from the moment that the, sh the shit hit the fan, I was really towards Gerben. Okay, Gerben, you have to watch out with everything you do. You have to be extra careful to not cross a boundary, to cross a, a law, to do something. Even if you don't know it in enthusiasm, do something wrong. For example, that you have this, um, you get a payment uh, in, in the bank account and you pay it instantly to a person you know has worked a lot and, and needs that money, money right now. It, it's just not allowed. All those things are not allowed. We were so strict. We were so strict. And for example, with the boat, Gerben bought the boat a year before I bought it for 275,000 euros. And he had to sell it. And just I just didn't want any to make any mistakes. So I bought the boat a year later for the same price. And Gerben didn't do, almost didn't do anything about the boat. So no. if you own a boat, if you are a little bit into economics, you know that a boat is definitely a liability. Yeah. It decreases in value every year um, so quickly. So yeah, but we just didn't want to make a mistake or do something wrong. So I bought the boat for the same price. I got a loan. It was fully financed and uh, yeah, nobody got hurt or got a disadvantage towards no. others. And Gerben needed to pay that money because he had a short term loan that needed to be paid back and he had to boat as um, security for that. And I also think we have a lot of smart people, uh, viewers around us. And uh, even some of those very smart viewers were saying, yeah, you are um, doing something wrong. We did everything with a notary. All the people you owe money to knew about it uh, and, and yeah, agreed. You can't say agreed, but they, they said, okay, it's fair. It's not something illegal what you're doing. And uh, yeah. And you're still in contact with all your uh, all those people and uh, so there was just no fraud we did not take any money away from the company or set assets on my name to secure them nothing no, like not that at all. Not at nothing all. like that and uh, I, I, I get that people in, in first instance if you don't know the story you think things like that I get that it's just how the mind works with the bankruptcy as well you get all these official people involved like a curator who did all the research if there was uh, personal liability for Gerben as a uh, as the as the director of the company well there wasn't he did everything by the books they didn't take ri more risk than uh, reasonable within the law um, they put only extra money in so that they didn't take extra money out they didn't get a paycheck for six to eight months maybe even yeah everything went by the books and as correctly as possible but it was tremendously hard the judgment most of all from people that we didn't know people that we did know yeah close far away uh, people ask for an explanation constantly constantly yeah. yeah and especially when you are because you are explaining a lot uh, t towards the curator and all the all the, officials party, all the all the officials that. involved but and you have to of course not only legally but morally as well yeah. those people put in their time or their money or whatsoever their energy and yeah yeah, yeah and also the team members it was very hard for them too it yeah. wasn't fun no it wasn't fun at all so if you're going through a bankruptcy or if you know somebody is going through a bankruptcy just think about that there's 
there is so much going on there's far more than you can see that meets the eye and uh, let's try to not get judgmental i know and this is hard but most bankruptcies and most entrepreneurs behind those bankruptcies are decent honest hard-working people and there's just this thin line between success and failure and if you ask the most successful entrepreneurs on this planet uh, they all or have experienced a bankruptcy or had that close call and just were able to to avoid a bankruptcy to take off yeah it's really hard and i think it's it's a good thing that we have limited liability companies and that entrepreneurs can stimulate the economy and do beautiful things without risking everything and i think that was the biggest lesson for us is that we will never never give a personal guarantee anymore you just have to believe in the business concept in the team and the people behind it or not but that's it that's it that's yeah. the deal we made yeah. never again no no and in the netherlands you have a kind of a program that you can go for personal bankruptcy and a lot of people are asking me why are you not going into that program and then you but just to explain a little bit that program takes three years yeah and then you have to work for three years and everything you earn above minimum wage gets set aside to pay all the um, the people you owe money to evenly compared to the height of the debt and uh, then even at the end of those three years even if you didn't earn enough money to pay everyone back you get um, annulment and then you are let, let's say then you are free again and then you are debt free yeah or we made the decision to not go into that process because i just want to pay back my personal uh the personal debts i have to the people um who believed in me yeah at that every moment every cent yes every cent. so that's yeah. um yeah and also going into that process is not fun at all you're uh, there's even somebody appointed to you that will read all your emails and mails and that decides upon how much money you can spend on what and where and where you cannot live it's like it, it, it's really not fun and it's it, of course it should not be fun if you get the reward of being debt free afterwards uh, but we just know with everything we've experienced that life is just too short and you never know what's going to happen so we really made that maybe very unsympathetic decision but to start living our best life just two years after the bankruptcy we said okay we're just gonna do it and fortunately i was financially capable of taking care of our family for the last five years now we've worked through to get a tremendously hard last years to set up this beautiful feel the breeze brand and company yeah and we see everything as a business so this is this is for us feel the breeze is our business yeah and it's not that we were on holiday we just no. decided to live on a boat instead of in an apartment still work very hard yeah we work very hard to take the risk let's say we see the field of breeze as a, as a new startup as a new company you, you did a massive investment yeah. um, to get to this point and yeah at this moment it's um, it's time to take off some load of your shoulders yeah yeah and just to be clear i did not rob a bank or something like that <laughs> to get that not? money no I had this beautiful apartment in Amsterdam, which I sold for quite a beautiful profit. And uh, that's what kept us afloat, definitely the first years uh, living on the sea. Yeah, yeah. you are a real investor. Uh, you made an investment in the, in the Field de Breeze company. Um, yeah, and that's where we are now. And, and, and you as well. You and every, every day we wake up and we look at each other and then we think, yes, we, we, we organized it, we, we, we managed it. What a beautiful life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
beautiful moment of the day for me it's uh, sunset this was a beautiful beautiful one again you're behind you're quite open sea but quite sheltered behind so crazy because behind over there is snow on top of the mountains we had a beautiful day today it was it felt like summer now it's getting cold again, so I think it's in the boat, it's around 7-8 degrees um, when we wake up. But during the day it's around 21, 22. And I love this feeling of uh, convertible sailing. Yes, this was our story, but there are so many more stories to tell. Not only Gerben and his business partner saw their dream ending, a lot of employees who were just as much emotionally invested as they were, were devastated as well. The emotional impact was the hardest. And yes, of course, there were also a lot of people involved who lost money. And some will see us living our lives and feel upset or find it unfair. But most of them are entrepreneurs or professional investors and understand the tremendous risks that come with tech startups. One of the biggest investors let Gerben know that of course it was a pity that he lost his money. But losing money is a risk that is part of the game. If you can't handle that, you shouldn't be playing at all. And most of them just wish Gerben and his business partner all the best with going through such a difficult period in their lives. Seeing his company come to an end, something he and his business partner worked for for over five years, investing all their time, giving it everything they had, every penny and even more, was extremely hard. It was really as a part of them died. A grieving process next to the feeling of failure, losing all self-confidence and in the end ending up even in a mental breakdown. The guilt of carrying the load of all the debts and the shame that came with that was hard for Gerben. It took him more than two years to come to a certain understanding with living with that responsibility. And even now he can still feel it. It is something he has to learn to live with. But as we went through this challenging time, we found our perseverance and happiness in the little things. And in a handful of beautiful people that stood by us no matter what. And we got surprised by strangers that reached out and helped us any way possible because they knew what kind of hardship an entrepreneur and a family go through in a situation like this. Yes, we got a lot of judgment, but we found a greater and deeper connection with our truest friends and strangers who became friends for life. And I am just proud of the fact that Gerben and his business partner took that leap of faith, created something amazing, and they contributed to the economy for more than five years. They created jobs, gave almost a million customers beautiful travel experiences. They made the impossible possible. Unfortunately, in the end, they just crossed that thin line between failure and success. And uh, we thought, let's talk about what we find the worst and the best of sailing life today with you. So uh, let's see what the day will bring. Oh.